Morning, everyone. We'll begin this prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to say a special welcome and hello to the people in Durban, South Africa. We're here to celebrate a very special man, and we're here to celebrate a special occasion. So Bishop Archbishop Dennis Hurley, as you know, was the Archbishop of Durban, South Africa, and was one of the three or four major people involved in dismantling apartheid, uh, both politically but especially morally. Um, he was an oblate who truly lived out our charism, and each year on the anniversary of his death, there's a mass celebrated at the Dennis Hurley Center in Durban, South Africa. And this year, we're very honored that we have been asked to celebrate this mass here at Albright School of Theology. And I want to say to the people in, in Durban, South Africa, we apologize for the simplicity of this liturgy. We're under COVID restrictions here, so we're not having any singing or music. Um, we also have a sparse congregation for that reason. But knowing Dennis Hurley, I think he would have he would appreciate the simplicity of this liturgy. So let's pause and we remind ourselves of our own need for grace, for courage and strength under God. We ask for God's mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. We pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Dennis Hurley, to whom you committed the care of your family, may with the manifold fruit of his labors enter it to the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings good news, who heralds peace, brings happiness, proclaims salvation, and tells Zion, your God is king. Listen, your watchmen raise their voices. They shout for joy together, for they see the Lord face to face as he returns to Zion. Break into shouts of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord is consoling his people, redeeming Jerusalem. The Lord bears his holy arm in the sight of the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. The word of the Lord. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all the peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim his marvelous deeds to all the nations. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus, with the power of the Spirit in him, returned to Galilee, and his reputation spread throughout the countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and new sight to the blind, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant, and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. And he won the approval of all, and they were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, for those of you in South Africa who don't know us, I'm Father Ronald Rollheiser here at the Albany School of Theology, and the, the gospel is read by Father Warren Brown, who's our general counselor in Rome. For here, the gospel we picked today to read is, is really where the oblates, where we take our mission statement out of. And Dennis Hurdy was an oblate. And he was an uh, exceptional oblate, an exceptional man. You know, I only had the privilege of meeting him personally a couple of times. Um, never had the opportunity to, have, to get to know him in any depth as a person. Um, although I knew in depth his work. It's one anecdotal thing. This fact, the last time I saw Bishop, Archbishop Hurley was on the front steps of our oblate general house in Rome. I was coming in from a walk, and he was leaving the property, and he was standing on the top of, we have a long set of steps with two suitcases going to the airport, and he, just, he said to me, probably mistakenly, he said, you look like a sturdy lad. He says, maybe you could carry my suitcases down for me, which I did. But I want to talk about Hurley's uh, person and so on. I want to talk about him as a prophet. You know, Today, we, our society, we're in search of true prophets. There's a lot of people out there doing strong things are not necessarily prophetic. Dennis Hurley was a prophetic man. You know, the dismantling of apartheid didn't happen by some military force. It didn't happen by some superior muscle that somehow, it happened by conversion. It was a moral victory and it was people like Dennis Hurley and Archbishop Tutu, Nelson Mandela, Ellen Bozak, and others who, who gave a, a moral sway to this thing. I want to talk about Hurley as, as a prophet, and I don't want to keep you too long, but in three, three things. You know, one of the, the people that I've read that I really believe was a true prophet, right on prophet, was, was Father Daniel Berrigan, the great Jesuit. I'm taking these three, three things from Berrigan. Berrigan says, first of all, a prophet is marked, a prophet makes the vow of love and not of alienation. It's so easy, <laughs> you know, to be in people's faces. It's not easy to confront people with truth and love. See, so a prophet isn't somebody who goes out there and disturbs things and so on, is in somebody's face. A prophet makes the vow of love. Anybody knew Dennis Hurley, you know, 
a very loving, simple person. He had no enemies. He had no people whom he hated, you know. He hated systems that oppressed people. And, um, and he spoke not out of egoism and not out of ideology, you know, or not out of some personal need to, to somehow of co uh, confront people. Um, he spoke out of, I thought I want to say the second thing, a sense of God. See, and the second thing about a prophet is a prophet draws their source both of inspiration and strength from elsewhere. And you see that, first of all, in Jesus. You know, um, the, the, the disciples around Jesus, they were always intrigued with Jesus' um, prayer life. They saw him pray a lot. And they sensed there was something special about Jesus, but they also sensed that he wasn't getting that. They weren't impressed so much with his miracles and so on. They were impressed that he could love an enemy. They were impressed that he could forgive he could turn the other cheek. And they always wondered, where did he get it from? And they realized he was getting it from his prayer. That's why in Luke's gospel, they approach Jesus and say, teach us how to pray. We want to learn how to pray because we want to find the strength. Dennis Hurdy drew his strength from God, not from liberal ideology or not from any kind of Greenpeace or not from any kind of... He, he, he came out of prayer. And then lastly, importantly, prophecy speaks for the poor, the poor. Jim Wallace, who's one of our contemporary prophets, Jim Wallace always says it very, just very bluntly. He says, any preaching of Jesus Christ that isn't good news for the poor is not preaching about Jesus Christ. Because Christ's first message, he says, I've come to bring good news to the poor. And if it's not good news for the poor, it's not the gospel. Dennis Hurley spoke for the poor. Not just for the racial poor, for all the poor. And he did it very humbly. He did, but he did it very effectively. Um, like, like, like Gandhi and Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King. He, he's a great um, example of that nonviolence works. You can preach nonviolence and it works. So we're here today to com commemorate him on the anniversary of his death. Um, but I want to quote Bonhoeffer in closing here. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and th this is a great line. He says, he's talking about Jesus. He said, Jesus doesn't want admirers, Jesus wants followers, Jesus wants disciples. And saints like Dennis Hurley, they don't want admiration, they want imitation. So th this is a, a mass and a time to, to celebrate Dennis Hurley, and I can say that as Oblates, we're very proud of him. He is uh, the incarnation of our charism. That's what Oblates are founded to do, and so on. But it's not so much that here to, to praise him or to admire him, it's to take a challenge from him that we too, we need to do what he did. You know, we need to make a vow of love. We need to draw strength from, from something beyond us, and then we need to speak for the poor. So again, just in closing, I want to say how privileged and proud the Albany School of Theology are, and thankful that you have asked us to celebrate this Mass. Um, and we wish you all the prayers of this community, all the prayers of Texas, to um, the Hurley Center in Durban, South Africa, uh, as we honor this great man. Stand for our intentions. We pray. We pray in gratitude for the life of Archbishop Dennis Hurley, and we pray that the work that he be and, and many others began, the work of dismantling racism, the work of dismantling injustice continues. For this we pray to the Lord. Pray for all those in our society who stand up for truth, who stand up for the poor, 
For them we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for our political leaders that they may see that this that their task is more of a moral task than that of simple politics, that it's a question of winning heart and converting hearts rather than breaking hearts. For our politicians, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for each of us that we may have more courage and more love in being able to speak the truth. For this, we pray to the Lord. We pause for our own intentions. We pray. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Dennis Hurley. We ask that through this Mass, this Eucharist, we may be uh, given grace and courage to work for the poor, to work for truth. For this, we pray to the Lord. Be seated for the offertory. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the sacrifice we offer to you with humble and contrite hearts. We pray that our sacrifice might be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice, which your departed servant, Bishop Dennis Hurley, while in body, offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring us your pardon, and we pray through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and every word to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for on this day, your, your church rejoices in celebrating the anniversary of the death of Dennis Hurley, you, whom you strengthened by the, may we be strengthened by the example of his life, taught by his words and his preaching, and kept safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the angels and saints, and the hymn of, and the company of the so with the angels saints we sing to him of your praise as we say holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have counted us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo and Michael, our bishops, and all who serve you in ministry. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep. Remember today in a special way, Archbishop Dennis Hurley, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, with the Apostles, with St. Eugene the Masnod, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now we pray across an ocean with our brothers and sisters in South Africa as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all. We offer to each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting.
the body of Christ. Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Mm. Not the body of Christ. <coughs> Not the body of Christ. <coughs> Why is the body of Christ? The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Need the body of the body of Christ. Christ body. Into the body of Christ. Please stand for our final prayer. <laughs> May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Dennis Hurley, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Before we go, again, we want to, on behalf of the Albany School of Theology, send our prayers and best wishes to the Dennis Hurley Center and to the Archdiocese of, of Durban, South Africa. The Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've celebrated. We go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. Thanks, Warren. You know, at our general house, those front steps are pretty steep, you know. He was standing on top of his two suitcases, so I wonder how to come down. Oops, forgot this microphone's on.